That's where she's got. How do you make a frame freeze, like columns freeze? Right. Uh, freeze uh, up to current column. Wait, oh, it might not do it. Okay, so now escape. Don't do this. Go ahead, do it. And I do I'll click on just E. Now try it again. There you go. Great. So now those are all frozen. Thanks. Uh -huh. Are we having a party? Oh, this is great. Yeah. No kids? All right. Morning, guys. Morning, Tyson. Good morning. Miss Oliver, you're muted. <laughs> WLC was having a good uh, good discussion about brains this morning in advisory. So that one got like all of a sudden I looked at my clock. I was like, oh, math class is starting in like three seconds. Yeah, right. that's how we always are. <laughs> Here we go. Only to end clock way through. <laughs> Tyson, you were cutting out a little bit. I couldn't quite hear what you were saying. He's frozen. He's frozen. All right, we're going to let these guys in. We're going to get rolling. Ooh, 23 already ready to go. Guys, thank you for being on time. My apologies for being a little bit late. As we're getting people in today, you need that lesson six packet. Oof, it's Thursday. Cute little pupper dog there reminding us. Yep, it's Thursday. Means we got one more day of the week to go. Just moving some things around here so I can see more people. Got all these people coming in still, getting connected in. All righty. Um, let me just move. I gotta move this around so I can see more people here. Because right now I got just three that I can see. That's not helpful. Awesome. Now I got more people. All right, real quick, everybody, show me that lesson six packet. Mine looks like this. Show me your lesson six packet. I need to see that you got what you're doing. If you don't have your packet, just show me what you're taking your notes on, on today. If for whatever reason you don't have this, show me what your notes are coming on. Madison's there, Brandon is there, Naeli's got it, Mayana's got it, Judah's there, Gabby's got it, Lavelle is set, 
Ooh, there's a couple of people I can't even see. My aunt has got it there. She's rolling over, making sure we're sitting up. Joelle's ready to roll. Brooklyn's got it. Yeah. Guys, I'm noticing a correlation. Lakendriana's got her notebook out. Love it. Noticing a big kind of connection here. People that I'm seeing with their packets or with something to write down on their notes are translating into people who are getting threes and fours on their exit tickets. Why? Because I'm fairly positive. Ooh, got a mic rolling on. Somebody. It was Mr. Tyson, but don't worry. Oh, okay. <laughs> no worries. Hey, I'm just like, I'm like searching, searching, searching. It's, it's kind of hard to do that when you're working through like 50 people at a time. No, you're good. Hey, seventh grade, really quickly. Um, can you, even if you have messaged us prior in the week to having camera issues, message us every day still um, so we can track that because we don't know if it changes or if it doesn't. So continue to reach out to myself or Mr. Edgar so we can track that right away and we don't have to bother you. Miss Tyler, you took the next words right out of my mouth. I love it. We're like, mm -hmm. love it. All right, guys, uh, game plan for the rest of the week, just so you can see what that calendar looks like. Just a couple quick reminders. Ooh, bam. There we go. Today, we're covering lesson six. Tomorrow, lesson seven, and we've got our topic quiz number six. Um, there are still a number of you around the horn here that are missing either topic quiz five or number four. Both of those we've taken so far in the second quarter. Those are included in your missing assignments. And if they're not completed by tomorrow, they're gonna go in as a 66% and still missing. If you wanna take those today, all you have to do is email me so that I can set up the extension so that you can get in there and do that. That's all you have to do. Hey, can I take topic quiz number five? Absolutely, I'll open it up, here you go. You've got until this time to get it done, go for it. Um, super simple conversation. So just make sure that that happens. So get those missing work, get that missing work in. You guys, a ton more turned in yesterday, which is super helpful for you. Helps me make sure that I can get all of your stuff done and updated in time. Uh, so thank you for doing that. Um, and take a look, Alex, there are two people who are done already, Judah and uh, Darnell. Already got your 10 topics done for the week. Darnell crushing it, doing 15 yesterday. Holy smokes, buddy. Nice job. Way to get those done. All right. Eggs and ticket scores from yesterday. Um, like I said, there's I can see who's taking notes and who's not. And it looks like yesterday, um, either we were really confused and didn't ask a lot of questions, or we didn't take a lot of notes. Because here were our scores. Oof. Just about everybody drops. Yeah, everybody drops significantly. Uh, MLC with a 1.5, WOC gets the win with a 2.3, and our remote crew at a 1.97. Um, nobody got the bonus for having zero missing, and with 17, 25, 22 percent, we are far away from that 60 percent bonus. Uh, WOC, you get the one point for the win today. We add that in over here. WLC is extending that lead. Crushing it. Now remember, tomorrow there's that quiz. Quizzes are worth double points. So there's a possibility of a six point swing. So MLC, remote crew, you guys get everybody to get your quiz done and it's done super, super well. Like you got six points. You're cutting into that lead really quick. Remote crew, you jump like a it's 18 to 13. Holy smokes. MLC, you'd come really close to like right back in the thick of it be a good thing to do. All right. <clears throat> Before we get into what the exit ticket looked like yesterday, I want to review two of those questions. We need to finish up <clears throat> our wisdom series videos. I'm going to move my little section over here just so that I can see a little bit more of the video and a little bit less of you just to make sure that the boxes aren't. Ooh, what quiz? Yeah, we've been talking about that all week. There's a quiz coming up on Friday. Topic quiz number six. It's going to cover everything that we've talked about in class so far this week. The nice thing is because the first part of module three is a lot of review from module two, some of the questions that are going to show up on the quiz tomorrow are going to look a lot like questions that we saw in topic quiz number four 
and number five in our end of module two test. But they're just very similar. Yeah, it's going to be on Alex. It'll be at the end of class. I'll let you know when that goes live. And you'll have a little bit more time after class to get that done throughout the day. Uh, guys, yesterday we talked about Ecclesiastes and that, that kind of hardened, grizzled old man teacher who was kind of very skeptical of the world. We're going to jump into Job today. Um, and I know from what I remember, you guys have talked about Job a little bit with Mr. Metzger. Job is an interesting character because I think we, when we do a little bit of digging, his timeline falls like really early on, like during Moses's life. But we get his story kind of the three quarters of the way through the Old Testament. So like his story is a little bit like out of place. Um, really interesting character. Interesting book. We're going to dive into that right now. Let me just move this out of the way and get my stuff shared up for video. Give me a thumbs up or a yes in the chat. If you can see Job sitting in the screen, he got like a tan background. Job looks like he's got some sores all over him and he's praying. Yeah, Judah's there. Awesome. All right, here we go. There are three books in the Bible known as the wisdom literature. Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Job. The first, Proverbs, showed us that God is wise and just. Yeah, we learned that God has ordered the world so that it's fair. The righteous are rewarded, the wicked are punished. In other words, you get what you deserve. But then we meet Ecclesiastes, who observes, well, people don't always get what they deserve. Uh, yeah, he said the world isn't always fair, that life is unpredictable and hard to comprehend, just like smoke. And this makes you wonder, okay, well, is God wise and just? Exactly. And so it's that question that is being explored in the final book of wisdom, Job. All right, let's dive in. So Job begins with a strange story that takes place up in the heavens, which are described something like a heavenly command center. So God is there with these angelic creatures called the sons of God, and they're all there reporting for duty. And God points out this guy Job, his servant, showing how righteous and good he is. And then one of these angelic creatures approaches. He's referred to in Hebrew as the Satan. The Satan. Who's this? Well, this word is actually a title, which literally means the one who is opposed. So out of this whole crew, he is the one questioning how God is running the world. And he proposes that Job might not actually love God, that he's only a good person because God rewards him. If God were to take away all of the good things he gave to Job, then we would see his true colors. So he thinks Job is just working the system? That's exactly right. Maybe he's obeying just to get what he wants. So God agrees to this experiment and allows the Satan to inflict suffering on Job. And Job loses everyone and everything that he cares about. It is devastating. And remember, he deserves none of this. God himself said so. The remarkable thing is that in the midst of all this suffering, Job still praises God. At least for chapters one and two. But then in chapter three, we find out how he's really feeling inside. He unleashes this poem that reveals this devastation. It's a long, elaborate curse on the day that he was born. After this, some of Job's friends come to visit him to offer their help. And all of them are like, Job, you must have done something horribly wrong to deserve this. After all, we know God is just, and we know the world is ordered by God's justice and fairness, so you must be getting what you deserve. And for the next 34 chapters, the friends and Job go back and forth in very dense Hebrew poetry. His friends keep speculating about why God might have sent such suffering, and they even start making up lists of hypothetical sins that Job must have committed. But after each accusation, Job defends his innocence. And Job is innocent. He is. He's also on an emotional roller coaster. At some moments, he's very confident that God is still wise and just. Yeah, in other moments, he's doubting God's goodness. He even comes to accuse God of being reckless, unfair, and corrupt. So Now pause here for just a second, because I think those three emotions that we just looked at, Job, like being confident that God's got him, and then scared that maybe not, and then angry about it. One of the big parts that I like about Job is like, it relates like 
I can say like, I've felt those three emotions and I'm sure like you guys have as well. Like, yeah, you know what? God's got me today. I'm, I'm totally confident. I can do all of this. And then there's something else happens and you're just like, what in the world is going on? I thought you had me. Um, so that trust and that doubt are very real emotions that we still feel today. I'll stop talking. We'll keep going. By the end of the dialogue, Job demands that God come and explain himself in person, and God does so. He comes in the form of a great storm cloud. Now, God doesn't give Job a direct answer. He doesn't tell Job about the conversation with the Satan. Yeah, he does something very different. He takes Job on a virtual tour of the universe. He shows Job how grand the world is, and he asks him if he's even capable of running it or understanding it just for a day. He shows Job how much detail there is in the world, things that we might see every day but really don't understand at all. But God does. He knows it all intimately. He pays attention to the beauty and operations of the universe in ways that we haven't even imagined and in places that we will never see. Then to conclude, God shows Job two wondrous beasts and brags about how great they are. Yeah, they are dangerous. I mean, they would kill you without even thinking about it. And God says they're not evil. They're actually a part of his good world. And then that's it. That's God's whole defense. It's kind of weird. I mean, what was this all about? It seems to be this. From Job's point of view, it looks like God is not just. But God's perspective is infinitely bigger. He's dynamically interacting with a whole universe of complexity when he makes decisions. And this is what God calls his wisdom. So Job asking God to defend himself is actually kind of absurd. He couldn't comprehend this kind of complexity even if he wanted to. So where does this leave us? Well, it leaves Job in a place of humility. He never learned why he suffered, and yet he's able to live in peace and in the fear of the Lord. But that's not where the book ends, because after this, God restores to Job double everything he had lost. And this, again, is surprising. I mean, is this a reward? Is God saying, congratulations, Job, you passed this elaborate test? No. I mean, the whole book just made the point that Job losing everything was not a punishment. And so now getting it back isn't a reward. So why does he get it back? Well, apparently God, in his wisdom, decided to give Job a gift. We don't know why. But what we do know is that Job is now the kind of person who, no matter what comes, good or bad, he can trust God's wisdom. And that's the book of Job and the end of our wisdom series. These biblical books of wisdom are amazing. Each one offers a unique perspective on the good life, and you need to hear all of them together as you learn to live with wisdom and in the fear of the Lord. All right, we're going to pause that one there because the last minute is just our buddies Tim and John talking about their project. Yeah, Job's is a really interesting character, and I love that you guys drop it in the chat like you know the story and you, you've heard this one before. Um, for me, it's just like, oh my gosh, like how real is it? Like Job's going through the same kind of emotions that we go through. And that was thousands of years ago. Those days where you just like question, like, does God really have all this under control? Like you think about the pandemic right now, like our, across the globe, thousands of people are getting sick every day. And you wonder like, what is going on? Like, God, I thought you had us. I thought you were going to protect us. But from our perspective, we can't see the bigger picture. God can see that bigger picture. Um, and he's got a plan. And part of that plan sometimes involves stuff that makes our days horrible. Uh, we just got to remember that he's got us right there. Like his hand is huge. And we're just this tiny little speck right there. And he's got us and he's going to take care of us and guide us the whole rest of the way. All right. I could go on and on about Job. I like Job. He's a cool dude. I'll tell you, though, the poetry in the middle of his book, 34 chapters of that dense poetry of him and his friends going back and forth, you can get a little dry and get a little tough to read through, but it's great. If you need something to, like, really just see somebody else feeling the way you're feeling, like, get into it. Like, Job, Job's the place to go. All right, let me get my camera up here. Let me turn this off for video so it's not blurry for you guys.
Here we go. Thank here we go. Grade before Mr. Loper starts, um, use that upstairs brain when I tell you this. Uh, most of you can just ignore me because you're doing great and you're in the picture and we can see you and you're there. I need a few of you. If you are ever leaving your seat, like there was like four of you who stepped away during um, the word of God there. You got to let us know. Otherwise, we're just going to assume you're not there and we're going to track that. Um, and then there's a few of you who we've reached out if you don't have that camera on or if you have like one of these um, and we reached out and we haven't seen it fixed, we're going to start moving you right to the waiting room if we don't get a response um, or if we don't see that fix. So please do that so you can be successful today. We've got that quiz coming up. So we want to make sure that you are here. You just got to fix those things so you can stay here. Thank you. Precisely. Thank you, Miss Tyler. All right, guys, I want to just go over just like how to set these up yesterday, because I think there was some confusion. Um, and yesterday's exit ticket was a really good example of what happens when you're not reading directions for each question. <clears throat> because yesterday's exit ticket said specifically right above questions one and two, there was a big highlighted bold section that said, find the sum. And then rewrite these. What kind of operation am I trying to find? when I'm saying find the sum, what mathematical op operation am I doing? Yeah, Kiyosh has got it. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, this is addition. So in this case, my word and means plus both times. Oop, my camera's going blurry. Love that you guys are letting me know about your camera issues. You gotta let Miss Tyler or Mr. Eggers know about those so that they can track them. Unfortunately, while I'm writing down notes, it's really hard for me to be able to bounce back and check those things. So make sure that you're letting them know as well. Okay, so this says negative x minus 14 and plus the opposite of negative 14. What's the opposite of negative 14? Drop that in the chat. Yeah, Kiosh is there, Jude is there, Madison is there, Gabby, Jaden, Hammond. Yeah, the opposite of negative 14 is positive 14. Then I can proceed. I'm not going to give the answer because, again, there were a lot of missing assignments yesterday. I want to be able to just, like, show you, like, how it should have started. Um, because a lot of people are just like, uh, I don't know. All right, opposite of 6x. What's the opposite of 6x? Sometimes we just have to slow down and unpack this stuff. Yeah, the opposite of 6x is negative 6x. We're still talking about finding the sum. So this word and means plus, and I've got three plus 6x. Things once we have it written down, like, oh, we can see what's going on here. And now all of a sudden these look just like our notes. Yeah, like Judas put dropping it in. I thought I saw Lavelle with the right answer that just dropped it in. Yeah, so we see this. Okay, then right in the middle here, I'm actually gonna switch colors of ink because we actually switched things going on. In the middle here, between questions two and three, it then there was another big bold yellow section that said, find the product. What operation did we switch to? Drop it in the chat. Ooh, make sure that you're staying awake. I got a couple people that look like they're drifting off to dreamland. Yeah, man, you got it right in there first. We, guys, we switched to multiplication. So this time my word and means multiply. And then we talked yesterday about these two words, multiplicative inverse and reciprocal. They're the same thing. They mean the exact same process. Take my number and invert it. Well, if my number is negative five, I could rewrite that as negative five over one. If I want the inverse, I do a little flippy flop. My multiplicative inverse of negative five is negative one fifth times 10 V minus five. Then we would take this and distribute it, solve it the rest of the way. All right, what about one fourth? Reciprocal of one fourth, what am I doing there? Yeah, Jude has got it already, he has a quick. Yeah, I do the same thing, I do my little flip flop. One fourth flipped upside down turns into four over one or just four. 
So I've got four times five T minus one fourth, at which point I can then distribute and then solve. Um, guys, here's something else that I've noticed that I've seen on a couple of people. I'm going to grab one other different color. <clears throat> Just kind of like highlight it. And plus it's fun. Like Miss Tyler, now I see like why you like these pens because they're so much fun to write and all these different colors. Like I'm totally hooked now. Um, if you see something like this, like, oh my gosh, like here's my expression. I've got a variable right here. But there's nowhere over here tells me what V is equal to. I have no idea. If that's the case, then my answer down here, V has to show up. Because if I don't know what my variable is equal to, my variable will not just disappear. It should show up down here as well. That happened a number of times where all I'm getting Thing is like number answers for all four. And that's not what we practiced yesterday. That's not what our notes showed us yesterday. That doesn't always happen, especially something like this, where we have multiple parts. This is actually called, you want to note this, this flip, we're going to get really fancy. This is called a linear binomial. Ooh. What's going on there? Well, if we were to graph this out for every possible instance of what t is equal to, we could graph this out. And on a graph, it would show up like a line. Binomial, it's got one, two terms, two numbers that make a line graph. All that means, big fancy words. Mathematicians like to sound fancy when really they're talking about very simple things. <clears throat> yep, Judah, exactly. Oh, wow. All right, let me get my notes. I got to get my packet back out here. Where did my packet go? Oh, my packet's all the way over there. Boom. Lesson six, you guys showed me that already. If you don't have that lesson six packet, notebook is great. Just some extra paper so that you can get those notes down today. All right, I'm going to make a couple of notes as a quick reminder. Quiz tomorrow. Because we're fully virtual, and because absolutely you need those pens, you should have that at the start. Yeah. Some of you are saying, oh, I learned that in Alex. I saw that stuff in Alex. Perfect. Yes. Alex is great because it gives you extra time to practice. The more time you spend in Alex, the more successful you're going to be in class. Why? Because now you're getting extra practice before we even talk about it. Quiz tomorrow. Guess what? You're at home. I'm at home. Can I prevent you from using your notes tomorrow? Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of people shaking their heads. No. Yeah, there's no way I can. So guess what? If you've got your notes, you can use them on the quiz. Oh, wow. Here we go. Yeah. Um, last thing, Alex, 10 topics. Due tomorrow by midnight. My report runs at 1159. So that way, Saturday morning, I see that, whoop, then I can just drop them right in skyward. Um, last thing, any missing work, all missing work. If you want to make sure that it's graded and updated in time for the end of the term, has to be to me by 3.30 tomorrow. If you get it in after 3.30, I can't guarantee that it's going to be graded in time to change to make sure that it's updated for you guys for your week four SCR sheet and grades. So it's got to be to me before 3.30 tomorrow. So you've got today and then a little bit of time tomorrow and that's it. So if you got missing work, your goal should be to get it done tonight. All right, objective today. We're going to rewrite expressions again. But today, ooh, we're switching to rational numbers. Underneath rational numbers, I'm just going to write fractions and decibels. All of a sudden, my, my brain just went back to the Muppets for whatever reason. 
they had a little sketch called Pigs in Space, where like Miss Piggy and her friends were astronauts. So my brain just went to pigs in space. I'll show it to my it's fun. Um, so fractions and decimals, what we're gonna work on today. Same process of what we've been doing all week still applies to fractions and decimals, just like we've been seeing. All of these rules, when they apply to whole numbers, also apply to fractions and decimals. I'm looking around and it looks like I've got a couple people that are drifting off to slumberland because they're laying down. Don't get kicked out of class because I can't tell if you're actually in class taking notes. Like I got a couple people that I can see are clearly laying down in bed, covered up. Oof, yeah. Hate so stopping to say that. It? If you're not fixing it right now, as Mr. Loper is saying it, I'm just going to move you to that waiting room in the next few yep. seconds. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys, here's what I want you to do. <clears throat> we're adding and subtracting and multiplying, except today we're doing the same process with some fractions. Um, can somebody remind me, when I'm adding and subtracting fractions, is there something special I need? Is there something that has to happen in order for me to add or subtract fractions? Gabe, Gabe's saying, yeah. Can you tell me what it is? A common denominator. Yeah. Adding or subtracting, so adding or subtracting fractions needs common denominators. Adding and subtracting fractions, I have to have common denominators. I don't need that when I'm multiplying because when I multiply fractions, I just work straight across. When I'm adding or subtracting them, I have to have a common denominator. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to take four minutes. There are five questions here, A, B, C, D, and E. Work through these as best you can. And I'm gonna come to back with you with my digital cup of destiny. Let me get my timer set here. Four minutes. That's rolling now. Here we go. Here we go. If you don't have your packet, I'll leave it up here on the screen. That way you can get the notes down. My timer is running. I'm going to reset my student selector. Yep. Reset everybody. There we go. A is a little tricky. So if you want to start with B, C, D, A and E are a little tricky because you really got to pay attention to what the wording is saying. Problems we're going to do today are no different than what we've done the last three days. The only difference is now we're dealing with these pesky fractions. That's it. See Treasure getting after it. See Lorelai will get into work. Sophia's getting there. Bell's digging in. Awesome, awesome. Mr. Hammond, thanks for letting me know. Go ahead, do that quickly, please. Got about a minute and a half to go. Um. 
Yeah, so you're saying I did stuff like this on Alex recently. Yeah. Which is awesome because the more you're doing on Alex, the better off you're like, the more practice you're getting. I can't say that enough. The people who are spending time on Alex each week are getting it. The people who are like on YouTube right now in class, like seriously, like why are you playing games? Not literally games, but like you're on YouTube in class. Like fix it. Focus on what you need to be focusing on. During class time, focus on class. Then you've got a break. Take a brain break. I get it. I totally get it. Got about 27 seconds to go. All right, here we go. <clears throat> We're gonna jump around a little bit just to go through these real quick. All right, <clears throat> Craig, you're up first on my magical digital cup of destiny here. Um, we're gonna start off with C. What is going on with C? I've got one fifth plus negative four. Did you get to C? Didn't get to see. Okay, well, let's think about it. Let's, let's work through it real quick, okay? Think back. How do I visualize this? Oh, go back to like module one. I even, if I need to like visualize a number line, totally do that. What am I going to do for C? Craig, I'm going to come back to you. Zaria, can you help me out? You're up next on my list. Heard you for a split second. No idea. Oh, okay, that's fine. Hey, you know what? We're a little stuck. Some of us are okay. Sometimes we have to do this, guys. I'm going to visualize the number line. I'm actually going to make a number line like this, and I'm going to make my number line tiny. Like here's negative four. Here's negative three. Why did I make my number line so small? Well, because I'm dealing with fractions, and fractions are really tiny parts of numbers. And I'm going to split this up into one, two, three, four, five sections. So there's one fifth, two fifth, three fifths, four fifths, five fifths would get me to my next hole. I'm at negative four and I'm adding one fifth. Remember, if I'm adding, I'm moving to the right on my number line. Judah, where do I end up? You end up at three and four fifths. Yeah, this is negative three and four fifths. <clears throat> There's a reason why I wanted to start with C, because then if we can get in that mindset, now we can say, oh, yeah, I know how to do this. This is just like counting on a number line. This is a piece of cake. All right, let's jump to B. Uh, Gabby, you're up next on my little digital picker meter. Did you get B? B looks a little complicated. But it's really not. Not quite. All right. Can you start me off? Mm, some people are dropping this in the chat. Yeah, this is kind of hard. The only the only thing that's a, that's difficult about this is now we've got to look at bigger picture, right? Gabe talked to us about we got to get some common denominators. And I see a number of things going on here. First thing that I could do is change all of these mixed numbers into improper fractions. Let's start there. Okay, I'm gonna change improper fractions. Remember like my circle technique here. I'm gonna multiply and then add. So two and two thirds, well, three times two is six plus two more is eight. So this turns into eight thirds minus one and one half, that's three halves. Minus four fifths. I don't have to do anything with that. Oh, my camera went super blurry. You can barely see anything I'm writing. There we go. 
okay, but can I do this? Eight thirds minus three halves minus four fifths? No, I can't. They don't have a common denominator. They need the same number on the bottom. Maddie, can you help us out? Do I have a common denominator here between three, two, and five? Yeah, you have a common denominator of three. Yeah, the only the the first number that shows up for all three of these numbers is 30. So I've got something 30th minus something else 30th minus something else 30th. So then the question is, okay, how do I get from three to 30? Well, I had to multiply by 10. So eight thirds turns into 80 30th. So I'm gonna grab my little pen, just make a little note here. I had to multiply by 10. Okay, I had to get from two to 30. Well, I had to do that. I had to multiply by 15 that time. So two times 15 gets me 30. So three times 15 gets me to 45 thirtieths. And then to get from five to 30, I had to multiply by six. All right, five times six gets me 30. Perfect. Then four times six gets me 24. Now I can do this. Now that I've got it sorted out, now I can, all I have to do is 80 minus 45 minus 24. Yeah, Mr. Ford's there. Jaden, did you get a final answer for me, Mr. Ford? When I subtract all these, what do I get? Go ahead and turn that mic. Madison's there, Judah's there. Okay, you dropped in the chat, perfect. Yeah, guys, when we subtract these out, we get 11 thirtieths. All right, we're gonna jump down to D now. D's probably one of the easiest ones. Ooh, Sophia, question, fire away. I have a question. Uh, so I don't understand what you meant when you said um, like how to tell if the um, how to tell if the uh, numbers or the fractions were supposed to be negative or not. Oh, okay. So we were talking about that yesterday. Um, no, right. I, yeah, I think. Okay. I just don't know if one is supposed to be negative or not. Perfect. Hold on to that, so because we're actually going to get to that a little bit more today. So I love that you're still thinking about that. Hold on to that. We're gonna. I promise you, we're gonna get to that. So thank you for reminding me. I will make sure to focus on that when we get there. It's in my notes. We're gonna get there. Guys, D is probably the easiest one because we're multiplying. Four times three fifths. Well, I can rewrite this. Any whole number I can rewrite as a fraction over one. When I'm multiplying, all I have to do is multiply straight across. Numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. Drop it in the chat. What do I get? Four times three fifths is what over what? Ooh, some of you are reducing it already, changing it into a mixed number. Yeah, Promise is there, Madison's there, Judah's there. Kiosh is there. Yeah, four times three is 12. One times five is five. Some of you changed that into two and two fifths. Yeah, multiplying fractions is probably one of the easiest things we're going to do today. Just because it's like the least complicated because all I have to do is whoop, straight across. I don't have to convert anything. I don't have to change anything. Yeah. <clears throat> all right, I want to jump into A. A looks tricky. And it just, when if we write it out, it is a little bit tricky. I'm actually gonna write it on a different piece of paper because I didn't leave myself enough room right here. I'm gonna cover these up for a second and I'm just gonna write it down here. If you've got the room, write it on your own packet, that's fine. Here's what's going on. I wanna take a second here. And a couple of you are dropping it in the chat and I haven't quite seen the right answer yet. All right, A, Terry weighs 40 kilograms. That's Terry's weight. says Janice weighs just a little bit less than Terry. 
Janice weighs Terry's weight minus two and three fourths. The question is, what is their combined weight? What is their total weight? Well, there's a couple of ways we could do this. So I'm going to rewrite this. I know Terry's weight is 40. And I know Janice's weight right here is 40 minus two thirds. So I'm going to add this, but look at this. I don't like subtracting. So I'm going to change that right away to adding a negative. And here, Sophia, this is where your question is going to come in. How do I know which part is negative? Well, if there's a negative sign in front of any number that's a fraction, all of it is negative. And it doesn't really matter where we put the negative sign. If we remember back to the beginning of module two, we talked about we can separate fractions into two different groups, right? I'm gonna rewrite this one more time. This is 40 plus 40 plus, remember now all of this is negative, not just the two and not just the three fourths. This whole thing is negative, which means just like if I can take a positive fraction, split it in two pieces, I can do that here. Two and three fourths is the same thing as negative two plus negative three fourths. I'm just gonna split them apart because it's gonna make my life a little bit easier. Yeah, Maddie, same thing. Yeah, you get to do this exact same process. Well, 40 plus 40, you can do that in my head, that's 80. So I've got 80 plus negative two plus negative three fourths. Okay, what's 80 minus two? Well, that's 78. And then I've still got this negative three fourths. I've got this a little bit less than one pound or one kilogram to take off. Yeah, so there it is. This one is 77 and one four kilograms. So Sophia, just like, just like you were asking, like which part of it is negative? It, it all is. And here's, a tr and here's kind of the, the quirky thing about negative fractions. It doesn't matter where we put that negative. Like negative three over four is the same thing as negative three over four. And it's the same thing as three over negative four. You can't see that. It, it really doesn't matter where we put it. Because as long as that negative is tied to some part of this fraction, the whole fraction is negative. Okay, so 77 and one fourth. I'm going to add that in. 77 and one fourth kilograms is their combined weight. <clears throat> okay, last one. E. Woo. Mr. Jackson bought one and three fifths pounds of beef. He cooked three quarters of it for lunch. How much does he have left? Now, this one's tricky. Because they're asking how much does he have left in pounds? Sherrod, what am I going to have to do here? How do I make this untricky? Um, I think you will have to write the problem out. And instead of adding, you should subtract the fraction. Oh, maybe subtracting. Okay. I like the way you're thinking there. We're going to try something different, right? We could subtract this. We could say, okay, I'm going to do some multiplication to find out how much he used and then subtract it. I like that. Sophia's saying, let's make that fraction into improper number. Let's do that first. Okay. So one and three fifths. Well, five times one is five plus three is eight. So Mr. Jackson bought eight fifths of a pound of beef. If he used three-fourths of it, how much, like, fractionally-wise, does he have left? Sophia, how much does he have left? Yeah, I see some, a lot of people are saying 17 20th. That's okay. Here's, here's my question. It's a different question. I'm not asking specifically how much weight he's got. I actually happen to have. A pile full of quarters standing next to me. Just because when I went out yesterday, I had some chain. I've got one, two, three, four quarters. Oh, wait a second. Money and fractions? Yeah, this works. 
he had this much weight. That's his whole amount for force. He cooked off three quarters of it. He used this much. What fraction of everything that he bought does he have left after lunch? Drop that in the chat. Sophia, you got the weight correct. Yeah, Judah's got it there. He's got one fourth of everything that he bought left. He used three quarters. That's these three quarters, three fourths. He's got one quarter left. He's got one fourth left. Now, just like we've been talking about the words and and is, meaning different things, this word of, circle that word of. I'll tell you a story about this word of. My first semester in college, I had to write a paper. And one of my papers I was writing about, it was like this, it was for a literature class. And this Harley, you probably laugh about this because I don't know that we've shared this before. I got stuck on the word of for about 20 minutes. And I was staring at my computer while I was typing because I was positive beyond all belief that the word of should have been spelled O-V, not O-F. Hmm? Of? That doesn't make a V sound. That makes a F sound. Yeah. Oh, wow. Definitely. No, it's not O-V. Anyway, this word of means multiply. Just like and can mean add, of means multiply. What we can do here, we could have done what Sherrod said and say eight fifths multiply by three fourths, but then subtract that and get there. Shorter version is we multiply by what's left, eight fifths times one fourth. Then we just multiply straight across. Ooh. Ooh. Exactly, Sophia. I had a very dumb moment there. 20 minutes on a two letter word. This turns into eight twentieths, and a lot of you put in the chat already, I can reduce this. Both of these have a common multiple of four. Naeli's got it, Jude's got it. Yeah, this is two fifths of a pound. <clears throat> Fractions work the same way of what we've been doing, just because now, because the, the numbers themselves are a little bit more complex. That just means we need to slow down and work through the steps. All right. I'm gonna now we're just gonna we're gonna dial up the intensity. Are you ready? We're dialing it right up to 11, right off the bat. Boom. Don't worry. We're gonna do this one together. Is this gonna change now that we have variables? Is our process gonna be any different? Yeah, Judah's saying no. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, Miss Tyler, that would be great. If you're on Alex during class, like class time is not Alex time. Alex time is outside of class time, unless like I'm giving you time on Alex. So if you're on Alex right now, um, shouldn't be the case at all. Shouldn't be working on ELA, shouldn't be working on work of God. So yeah, both are going to get closed out. Not cool. Focus here in class. Because if you're not focused here, like you're missing the important parts. Okay, guys, same thing happens here. I'm going to look here. I've got my denominators here, three, four, six, and nine. Remember, I need to find a common denominator. And we got a hot mic on. There we go. What in the world common denominator between three, four, six, and nine? I'm going to give you a couple seconds to think about that. Rocky is thoroughly comfortable. If you can hear the train rolling through my living room, that's actually him snoring. Ooh, my chat bubble moved out of the way. Yeah. Do I have a common denominator between three, four, six, and nine? Yeah, Maddie's got it. Kiyashi, you're close. 18 doesn't work for four. Judah and Lincoln, you're a little too high. Maddie, you were the first one to nail it. 
my common denominator here between three, four, six, and nine is 36. <clears throat> Kiyasha had 18. 18 would work if four wasn't in the picture. Unfortunately, four doesn't go into 18 perfectly. All right, so let's do this. We're gonna change all of our fractions right away to a denominator of 36. Okay, so I've got something over 36N minus another thing over 36N. Don't worry, we're gonna come back and add all these in. Plus something 36N plus two and something 36N. Okay, how do I get from three to 36? Just a quick exercise here. Three times, ooh, Madison here. Killing it today. Maddie, can you walk us through this one? Love the way you're thinking. Sometimes hearing it from somebody other than me. <clears throat> so I had to um, multiply two times 12 and I got yeah. 24 over 36. Okay. So I got 24, 36 N. What about three fourths? I'm going to change three fourths to 36. I got... um. 2736. And yeah, I'm multiplying by nine. Keep going. And then I got six over 36 and plus two, eight and 36 and. Yeah, there we go. If I find my common denominator, all I have to do is multiply across and I can do this. Now, because they all have this term, they all have the same variable of n. N shows up in all of them. Now I can just work my way straight across. Well, I know that this two here stays put. I'm just gonna say, you know what? There's a two there. Boop. Two stays put. It's two and something 36 N. All I have to do is work my way across left to right. Well, I can do this 24 minus 27. Well, that's negative three. Negative three, now I'm gonna add six. So if I'm at negative three, I add six. I'm gonna play my integer card game in my head. Negative three plus six gets me back to three. And I'm gonna add eight more, gets me to 11. Now, we could have changed one little thing to make this a little bit different. How did she get 12? Oh, what I did here, this is times 12. So I'm telling you, this is how I got from this fraction to this fraction. And I, I had to multiply it by 12. So 12 is not part of the fraction. That's why I wrote it in green ink. One thing we could have changed to make our life a little bit easier and resort this was I could have changed this to adding and make this a negative 27. And in this case, like Sophia, this ties into your question before, like how do I know which parts to add the negative to? In this case, I would make my numerator negative because I want my denominators to be the same. So 36, negative 36, 36, 36. And I mean, it would still work because our denominators still have the same value. But in this case, I'm adding that negative 27. So there you go. Okay. Same process. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to try that on your own now. Exercise one. I want you to focus just on question B. Don't worry about A. Because these are a little more complex. I just want you to focus on one at a time. I'm going to set my timer for three minutes. Sort through. I've got I plus six I minus three sevenths I plus one third H plus one half I minus H plus one fourth H. Oh my goodness. Guys, remember, if I've got two different variables, I cannot add them together. So my answer should have an I variable and an H variable this time. So 
some of you are excited over the change in complexity. Some of you are like, oh my gosh, what? Yeah, don't worry. It's exactly the same process. It's exactly what we've been doing. Now it's just fractions. We've seen fractions before. Fractions are not intimidating. They're just tiny numbers. Like, you don't scare me. You're a tiny number, right? Like, are you scared of most four-year-olds? They're just tiny people. They're not scary. I mean, they're full of energy, so I mean, sometimes that can be a little scary, but like, you're one-fourth of a person. Like, really, how scary can you be? Judah getting after it. Maddie's there. Lewis is there. Gabby's there. Promise digging in. I see a couple people just kind of blindly staring at their pencils. Pencils aren't just magically going to give you the answer. You actually have to work through this process. Now, this one will not have just a single number answer. Because I have two variables there, I have an I and an H, and they don't tell me what those variables are equal to, those variables need to show up in my answer. So I'm going to have something I plus something H. <laughs> Sophia, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so that's great. So I just said like a four-year-old is like a quarter of a person. So Sophia just applied that out. Um, so if you're a fourth of a person when you're little, when you're 40, then you're like 10 fourths of a person, which would make you like three and one quarter person. No, I definitely don't feel like three people. That's for sure. I'm definitely just one. I don't know if the world could handle three Mr. Lopers. That would be a scary day. There is my timer. Here we go. Oh, where'd my camera go? There it is. Okay. This, this one's a little tricky. This one's a little complicated. Who can start me off? I want to change this so that I can move maneuver some things around. I want to change this whole thing to addition. I need somebody that can help me get that part process started. Let's do that. I want to start this. I want to change all of it to addition. Judah, help me out. Love in the hands. Um, <clears throat> I did one over one I so that it could okay. be a fraction. Love it. I, plus six over one I plus negative three over seven I plus one one half I plus one third H plus negative oh, one over hang one. Oh, hang on, hang on. You lost me for a second and then I saw what you were doing. You moved, you moved it so that you put all of your I variables together first. Is that what I'm seeing? Yeah, that's really smart. Because now I've got like, you know what? Here's all of my I terms, and then I'm going to switch because I'm moving this to addition. You're like, your brain's processing two steps at once here, and a lot of people might not pick up on that. I'm going to change it all to addition and apply the associative property at the same time. Okay, I got one half I, so then we need to keep going. Plus one third H. Okay. Plus negative one over one H. And then plus one fourth H. Awesome. Because if we look at this, now I've got my variables sorted. I've got all of my I terms here, and I've got all of my H terms over here. That was brilliant, Judah. That was awesome. I love that. Love seeing that. Okay. Now I've got to say, okay, what terms can I combine right off the bat? Well, I look at this and one over one and six over one, they already have the same denominator. I'm going to add those two first. So this turns into seven over one I, because that's seven I. I have one I plus six more. But then I've got this negative three sevenths and negative one half. I need a common denominator between seven and two. What is a common denominator between seven and two? 
I'm looking for somebody who's still feeling brave and bold here. Yeah, Madison's there. Gabe's got it. Mr. Hammond. Mr. Hammond, what's our common denominator? 14. 14. Sometimes all I have to do is just multiply them, and that works just fine. So I've got 14i plus something else, 14i. Well, in order to get from 7 to 14, I have to multiply by 2. So negative 3 sevenths turns into negative 6 fourteenths. And 1 half turns into 7 fourteenths. Okay, so my i section is done. Whoop, I'm going to move over to the right side. I'm going to work on the h's. I'm going to put these in parentheses just because they're all my i terms. That's it. Just going to group them like that. Okay. I've got one third H plus negative one over one H plus one fourth H. I need a common denominator between one, three, and four. One, three, and four. Yeah, Lavelle's there, Madison's there, Judah's there. Yep, you're seeing it. Common denominator is 12. Okay. I'm going to put a parenthesis here. I'm going to get just 12H. Well, how do I get from 3 to 12? Well, times 4. Well, negative 1 over 1H turns into negative 12 over 12H. It's still equal to just 1H. 1 fourth H is the same thing as 3 twelfths H. Okay. Now that I've got all of my terms together, like now I can work this. I'm going to go back to my i section here. I'm just going to rewrite this. 7 over 1i is just 7i. Negative 6 plus 7. Well, that's just 1. So this is 7i plus 1 14th i. Oh, wait a second. This is 7 and 1 14th. Remember we, we said we can split apart our fractions? If they've got the same variable, we can combine them back together. All of that, all of this weirdness combines down to 7 and 1 14th i. Now I got to figure out my h terms. I've got 4 twelfths plus 3 twelfths plus negative 12 twelfths. Well, let's add our positives together. 4 plus 3 gets me. Drop it in the chat. This is quick. If I add 4 and 3 together, what do I get? Yeah, Gabe's there. 7, 7, 7. Yeah, loving it. Okay, so now I've got to add 7 plus negative 12. Yeah, Maddie's there. This turns into negative 5 twelfths H. Well, I can't do anything more with that, so my final answer here is 7 and 1 14th I plus negative 5 twelfths. H. Can I do anything more with this answer? I'm seeing a bunch of people shaking their head no right now. A lot of people saying no. Brandon, how, why, why can't I do anything with this? Why can't I go any further? Um, I guess there's no there's no other denominator. There, well, yeah, that's part of it. Manual, why can't I do it? You've got it perfectly. Because they're different variables. Yeah, I've got different variables. I can't add I's and H's, just like Simone remembered yesterday. I can't add water bottles and cell phones. They're different terms. Guys, this right here, when we're all done, when we can't go any further, oh my gosh, I'm hitting it one more time. We have put our answer into standard form. Spell you bottle. I know, we're still gonna try to make that a thing. All of that work. This would have been factored form. And we worked from factored form all the way down to standard form. So when you see something say, put your answer in standard form, it just means to simplify. Truth. Yeah, truth, truth, truth. A water bottle you can drink out of and make a phone call on. Maybe even play a game or something. I don't know. We'll figure it out. We're in the development stages. Now we're just brainstorming. All right, guys. <clears throat> I would love to be able to dig in 
a little bit more. There's one more I want to do together um, to work through a little bit more multiplication. Flip with me whoop, to exercise three. We're actually going to jump to the top of page four. I knew we weren't going to get through everything today just because these are, these questions are a little bit more complex. They're a little bit longer. So I want to get through that. Gabe says that's just a waterproof foam. Yeah, but you can't drink water from a waterproof foam. That's the trick. That's the key. <clears throat> okay. I want to focus on question A. We're going to skip B. We only have time for A. I knew we weren't going to be able to get through all of it. Hope we would get through more, but I know that these are complicated, so I want to be able to do this. Same process applies as to what we were doing yesterday and what we were doing on Tuesday. We've got to rewrite these things so we can sort them out and see the whole process. So I want to show you like how this works. I want to show you how this gets started. And if you've got questions, like throw them at me, like keep them coming. Okay. First thing I want to do is I want to say, you know what? I'm going to change what I can change to make my life easier. I see the subtraction right there. I want to change that to addition right away. So let's do that. Negative six and one third plus negative one half. Now, because my negative one half is right next to this other parentheses here, there's that invisible multiplication. I'm going to put that in so that I can see it so that I know what's going on. Plus times one half plus y. Okay. Perfect. I've got everything to addition. I can rearrange things if I need to. I can't right now. There's nothing else I can do. Six and one third is all by itself. It's going to get added to this whole process because I have to do multiplication first. So I need to go through and say, okay, there's multiplication. I have to distribute. So now I'm going to go through and do my distribution distribution. So I've got six and one third plus, remember I'm multiplying here. I got negative one half times one half plus negative one half times y. Oop, I forgot my multiplication dot there. I still need to do my multiplication. All I've done so far is just rewritten this expression two different times. I still haven't solved anything yet. My six and one third still hasn't changed. I haven't done anything to it. There's nothing I can do to it yet. Okay, I've got negative one half times one half. What do I get here if I do this multiplication? Some of you are like, oh my gosh, this is painful. I know. That's why we're walking through this one. I just want to watch, watch through the process. Madison's there. Yeah. One half times one half, but one of them's negative. Yeah, this is negative one fourth. What about negative one half times y? Well, that's just, we're multiplying these together. I don't know what y is equal to. It's just negative one half y. Why? Because that's just the way it works. Can I combine anything at this point? Yes. The problem is I've got fractions that don't have the same denominators. I'm going to split this up to make my life easy. This is negative six plus negative one third plus one fourth plus one half y. Do I need to change anything with six? Nope, I don't. Six can stay as it is. What about one third and one fourth? How do I change that? How do I make that addable? Gabe's there, Jude is there. Yeah, you got it. You can change them into twelfths. Well, one third, that's four twelfths, and one fourth is three twelfths. Well, negative four plus three, that, that's negative one. So I've got six plus negative one twelve plus one half y. 
just like Emmanuel told us, I can't add things that don't have the same variable. These don't have a variable, so I can add them. This one does. I can't. Remember, if one part of my fraction is negative, the whole thing's negative. Perfect. These are both negative. Negative 6 and 1 12 plus 1 half y. Even when it looks all complicated, all we have to do is go through it step by step and say, oh, I can tackle this. This is a piece of cake. Questions, thoughts, comments. Some of you I can see I'm boring you right now. Oh my god. Or maybe you just were up late too late last night. E's all fired up. E's feeling confident. I'm going to tell you, <clears throat> I wanted to show you this one just because I want to show you that something that looks really complex, like the overall process, like it's pretty easy to figure out. Like we just have to break it down. On your exit ticket today, there's not going to be anything this complicated. So be assured like, oh my gosh, you're not going to have to write all of this out. Looking for any last minute questions. If not, it looks like we lost a couple people. Yeah, we lost a handful. That's unfortunate. Because like I said, today's complex. It's not hard. It's just complex. <laughs> I can't do an exit ticket. My hands are tired from all the writing. Yeah, we did write a lot today. Because this process is just involves a lot of steps. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to stop sharing here. I'm going to get that exit ticket up so you can see it and so that it's visible and shared and live. Oh, that's my fault. Give me one second here. In all of my excitement, I forgot to just finish setting the exit ticket from for today. So if you give me one second, that's going to be up momentarily. Um, I am going to ask you today to show all of your work. Now, there are four questions on today's exit ticket. However, I know you're going to need a little bit more time than what, like, end of class happens in about, like, nine minutes. I know you're not going to finish this in nine minutes. That's fine. Like, I get that. Um, so, like, if you need more time, like, I get it. Just get it turned in today. Like, I'm going to change the time, the due date time, actually, right now. I'll make it due by noon. What time is lunch for you guys? Yeah, you know, I'll give you till the end of lunch to have it done. Because I know, like, it's a little more complicated. It's a little bit more, um, not complicated, it's complex. Complicated is the wrong word. Uh, make sure that everything that I need is assigned to it, not so you guys can view file. Sorry, guys, this is my fault. I should have had this done, and I thought I had it done, and apparently I just missed one section here. Cancel that. Cancel that. Cancel that. Come on. There you go. You ever keep hitting the same button thinking that you're doing something and you're not doing what you need to be doing? Oof. Brain's not there until Thursday. We still got one more day. Okay, here we go. Finally, exit ticket is going live right now. Yeah, I know we only have eight minutes left. That's my little reminder timer. Whoop, eight minutes just went live. I'm going to share that with you so you can see it right now. Share screen. Here we go. Boom. Exit ticket today looks like this. There are some fractions in there. Now, I'm going to tell you this. Question four is a little bit tricky because there's some division in there and we didn't get that far today. So I'm going to count question four as a bonus. I want you to try it, though. Like, you're not going to get any points docked if you do it wrong. But I want you to give it a shot. first one there is four fifths times 15 x minus five <laughs> and then number two is one seventh 
times 14x plus 7, and then subtract another 5. Question 3 looks complicated. It's not. It's just two clusters put together. 1 fourth times p plus 4 plus 3 fifths times p minus 1. Remember, i got to do my multiplication before I do any addition. Then that bonus question, number 4. That's 3t plus 2, all of that divided by 7. Then add t minus 4 divided by 14. I was hoping we would have gotten to one that had a little bit bigger fractions, a little bit more division today, um, but I'm going to make a question for bonus. It's probably not going to show up on your document that I wrote this as bonus, but you can go ahead and add that. I will remember that that it's a bonus. We're there. I'm going to stop sharing so you guys can get to work. <clears throat> so you guys have your full screen. Um, your options today are either to type out every step of your problem on this document, or if your hand's not too exhausted, do your work on a separate sheet of paper and upload your picture. I need to see your whole process today. I want to see every step. I want to see every change that you made through your thing. I don't want to just see the final answer. If you give me just the final answer, I can't give you full credit. Today, I need to be able to see your whole process. I want to see every little twist and turn and wrinkle in your brain's process today. So take a breath. Just stop what you're doing for a second. Do this with me. Take a breath. <sighs> Say this with me. Fractions are not scary. I can't hear you. Fractions are not scary. Fractions are not scary. Oh, I can hear you. This is awesome. Yeah. Okay. Take one more breath. <sighs> All I have to do is take my time. Well, I have to oh, see? Yeah. 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 No, when does the LA start? ELA starts at 9.38. So as of right now, you have nine minutes before the start of class. Gabe, get another question. Hey, seventh grade, um, better job today being in your frames and actually like getting to see you and that you are engaged. Um, tomorrow, what I want you guys to think about. So as we have Go Guarding up and Mr. Loper, feel free to jump in. Uh, some of you are getting really frustrated with us, uh, specifically me today, because I was on so Go, Go Guardian duty. Um, you should make sure the only tabs that you have up are your Zoom and any documents Mr. Loper is mentioning, okay? Otherwise, you're gonna get frustrated. Mr. Loper, do you want to speak any piece to what should or should not be up and why? Yeah, so big thing, number one, like YouTube, like unless I'm sharing a video, like you're going to see that through Zoom. So YouTube should not be a thing between 8 a.m. and 3 p.m. except during lunchtime. Like lunch, you're okay. But between 8 and 3, like YouTube should not exist to you unless it's being used for class. If it is, like I'm just going to like start recording the demerits like, for you're not following the directions. Like, that's not the expectation. Like, YouTube videos, music, games, like, your time should be focused here in class on what we're doing. So, no, like, looking up puppets. <laughs> no, trying to find no out. No chatting. New, no chatting. No, okay. trying to find, like, the, near, the newest thing to, like, beat everybody on Among Us. Like, I know it's a fun game. Like, yeah, I play, like, We'll talk, we can talk about Among Us like during advisory time or like if you come to office hours and we're just nobody's there asking questions, we just hang out. Um, ask Mariana. You could just go, oh, wow. Um, like I just found out like a cool new game to play on Among Us, which is like insanely fun and really totally different and weird. Um, but yeah, like I get it, guys. You want to do something a little different during class time, focus on class. Okay, because so if you're not read yep redirect that frustration ladies and gentlemen use that upstairs brain all we're doing is try to get you to focus okay so show right. that right away and then we don't have to annoy you about it <laughs> and then like later once we got all our work done then i can tell you about like mario kart among us 
right? Like what? Yeah. If you don't know, like, I, yeah, it's fun. But don't look it up now. Don't look it up now. <laughs> Like I'm looking at my Go Guardian now, and what I'm seeing right now brings like joy to my heart. I got about 80% of people on their school Chromebooks logged in. And of those 80% of my seventh graders, about 85 to 95, 85 to 90 percent of them are all on their exit ticket right now. Like that's showing me focus. That's showing me good things. Love it. Absolutely. Mr. Eggers, I, I see you're not here. Absolutely. Um, guys, office hours today will start at 245. Um, so after, after Word of God is done, I'll have that link posted um it'll show up around noon today click on the link it'll take you to my office hours zoom come ask whatever questions you need yeah number four is bonus so give it a try we're going to do the exact same process of what we've been doing some more fractions are not scary fractions are just little numbers like big numbers can be scary but little numbers not scary all right, guys, I got 934. Remember these exit tickets. I bumped that time back to the end of lunch. So you've got time. They're not going to be marked missing or docked any points if they're turned in before lunchtime. So get them there. Um, and then I will see you in about four minutes in ELA. Make sure you're on time for ELA. It starts at 938. Don't be tardy. Don't be absent. Don't be late. See you over there.